force knight c3 knight c6 f4 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 bishop b5 and knight to d4 this move we practically covered and there is not much to it now let's go to some other continuations e6 is the first thing we have to look we will look at uh, uh, after knight d4 e6 on fifth move for black looks like normal developing move black is trying to play knight e7 and they will have a nice uh, regular uh, Sicilian position. But this e6 move is nearly winning, uh, nearly losing for black. Nearly, white nearly wins by force. And in the hands of a good positional player, it's sure that. So bishop takes c6, and now regardless which way black recaptures they gonna have severe problems with with the pawn structure now let's see how first let's look at b takes c white goes d3 and let's see why is this double pawn so bad we know the double pawn that is part of the chain it's not really a problem but the problem is not the double pawn. Problem is that black has c8 bishop that can never, never be activated if white does good job. Now, c, we just, go, we just went d3. Suppose black goes knight e7 and white goes castle. Now black has to push either d6 or d5 and we deal with it. If black goes bishop a6, we will make sure that we play bishop e3 and on c4, d4, leaving bishop on a6 in a very bad shape. Now, let's look at some continuations d6 or d5. On d5, we will go a5 so we want to make sure we we don't want any contact in the center and after castling we go knight to a4 now you see to win this game white needs to play one more move c4 followed by b3 and then c5 pawn is totally dead. White can pick it up by playing bishop a3, bishop takes c5. It's absolute positional disaster. So when in this position again, we just looked. I want to go once more slowly. So black plays e6. We play bishop takes c6 bc and d3 and after knight e7 we castle now when we castle uh, black has two moves d6 or d5 so we just looked at d5 we play e5 and we want to make sure that light, light square bishop of white never activated so if black tries bishop a6 what should we do we should go knight a4 or maybe rook e1 first why rook e1 because we, if we go knight a4 and they play c4 we want to go d4 without black to play c3 and opening the bishop at, by attacking our rook so I may want to play rook e1 first. Anytime pawn goes to c4, we will play d4. So that's not going to work. So if black castles, then we go knight a4, attacking, or maybe even b3, attacking c5 pawn. On c4, we will still play d4, putting the knight on c5 and having 
terrible position positioned bishop on a6. Now let's look what else can be done. Now otherwise if black does not play bishop a6 but they simply castle knight a4 uh, even doesn't matter whether black is castled already or not and on queen a5 c4 very strong and if castled then b3 see this position is totally lost because bishop will never see light of day and next move we will go queen e1 trying to exchange and then we will take the c5 pawn but c5 pawn we want to take with the bishop by playing bishop a3 and bishop takes c5. This is a positional, positional disaster. So black cannot play like this. So suppose now black does not go d5 at all. So they went d6, which is, as I mentioned already, very bad move. We play b6, b takes c, we go d3, knight e7, castle, and they go d6, so they go castle, doesn't matter. On castle or d6. When, as soon as white finished development and they castled, their next move is going to be e5. Now white plays e5 and black is almost lost again for different reasons well actually for the same reason that light square b is half dead piece and domination on dark squares will be critical black is going to go knight e4 and uh, attacking the c5 pawn but it's not so much c5 pawn we want we may go bishop e3, bishop f2, bishop h, h4. Actually, it's almost impossible to go through all the patterns white can. I can, I can tell you the ideas. It's a domination on the dark squares. How it has to be executed. The best thing to do is look for the games. Look for the games. I have played, I don't know, hundreds of games where I won those positions. On an internet chess club, I won it practically without putting any effort because the position played by itself. And you can play bishop e3, f2, h4, and then go with all your pieces on queen side and win. And, or you can play simply by playing c4, b3, and then winning the pawn and winning in the center. Well, it's because of the dead bishop on c8. Now let's look what let's look what will happen if black plays e6 anyway, but but captures uh, white's bishop with the d pawn. Now that's not much difference as far as the plan goes. Uh, only difference here is that we will never have a chance to win the c pawn because black can always protect with b6 but then we go d3 and castle and black castles and now we go e5 now after e5 most of the ideas still remain there the ideas are 94 blockading and targeting f6 and d6 square, bishop e3, bishop f2, bishop h4, and those black has still has dead bishop on c8, and side it will be assaulted real quickly. Knight with, uh, well, we can play b3, bishop b2, supporting knights on f6, and then the other knight on g5, transferring rook or the queen on queen side overwhelming attack this is overwhelming advantage there is no way black can uh, neutralize white's attack so what we conclusion we came to here 
that after bishop b5, e6 is a real bad move. Now let's look at d6 move. What will happen on d6? On d6, we just castle or we go d3, it doesn't matter because it's all transposition. Now, when white plays knight f6, remember, as soon as they go e6, we immediately take and go d3 and e5. We transpose to the other continuation. But we don't want to take voluntarily on c6, not until black goes six. Now, if black goes knight f6, we go queen e1, we want to transfer queen to h4, and now after black castles, and as soon as black castles, we have to eliminate the bishop, eliminate the knight on c6. We don't want this knight to jump to d4, attack the pawn on c2, or we don't want to be forced to take and go knight e2, because bishop on b5 doing nothing, our pawn on c2 is weak, so we want this to happen. So as soon as black castled, we want to eliminate the c6 knight, b takes c and queen h4, trying to attack on a king side. Now about this attack that I previously mentioned, how it will be developed. This is very powerful attack. Rook b8, for example, f5. Now let's look at it. What happens if white simply takes on f5? Actually, it's not going to be any different if white does f5. We go bishop h6. It's a very strong move. And now whatever black does, maybe rook takes b2. Knight to g5. Now this is already very, very strong for white. The better, best way to do it, I'm just showing you the pattern we're going to attack with, f5 and rook b8, um, if he, in this position. Before you go f5, you see there is no counterplay for black. This is our main plan. What we want to do, we may invest one tempo for white, like rook b1, and then we stop all black's counterplay, and next we want to go f5 and bishop h6. We don't want rook to come in on b2 in one move, and we want him to try real hard to get any attack on the um, uh, queen side. Suppose they go bishop a6, we go f5, anytime they go go d4, Remember, the rule we are following to, minimum contact on the queen side, maximum contact on the king side. So, and if black goes something, I don't know, I don't know what can black do. Uh, the, the pattern is bishop h6 and knight g5. This is very powerful if black goes something like queen a5, bishop h6, just to tell you what may happen here. On c4, we're going to go d4, and uh, this is already unstoppable attack, followed by knight g5, and later on, this, this is like unstoppable combination, fg, and this happened, per, and personally, in my games, it happened, I don't know, maybe like a few hundred times, and everyone who plays it, I'm sure, um, my students or or whoever bought my tapes on it, so they have won uh, like hundreds of games with the same combination. Rook takes f6. Now rook cannot take because there is mate in two moves. And if uh, uh, king takes, then we have this rook f1 check forcing king back and then queen takes h7 mate. So this is like, like a thematic combination. It goes over and over and over and it's very, very difficult for black to face. 
Now, let's look some variety, different variety of this, this attack. At some point, Black realizes that they may get in some trouble and play differently. Okay, here is what we're gonna do. The possible continuation, e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5, d6, we go d3 or castle, doesn't matter, and now bishop d7. Now, this move it was endorsed by Garry Kasparov, but it's not necessarily a very good move. So, black will go a6, bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6, and now we go queen e1, and black goes queen d7, also, or maybe knight f6. Now, let's look at this. This is actually a very interesting position. What happens after knight f6? Now we're going to see a little variety of this attack. We go queen h4, it's like this, just like we're supposed to do. After castling, we go f5, just like we're supposed to play, and e6. That's the time when we shouldn't play bishop h6. This position is bad for black, really bad, but not after bishop h6, because here uh, black has moved like this, they can go knight h5, they can uh, maybe go take, take a knight to g4, or finally they may go move like knight d7, and it's it's very difficult to get an advantage for white here. How g5 is extremely strong. e takes f, and now it's white's move. White can simply play rook a to e1. I would say black is lost here. Why is black lost? They can never play f takes e. You see, this pin is deadly. f takes e loses to knight d2, and we're now attacking knight on f6 three times, and we win a piece. Several times my opponents on high level, they try to play h6, which is also bad. Bishop takes h6, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and knight g4. But now after queen f4, they're facing more difficult problems that have no solutions. You see, if f takes e, which must be played, because uh, otherwise white wants to play e takes f. f takes e, we obviously it because black is going to capture on f3, and f takes e, we simply play d takes e. And now the knight is hanging on g4, if knight goes on f6, then after rook d1, black is in a lot of trouble, after knight g5, black is in a lot of trouble with the idea of queen h4. Well, altogether, black is in a lot of trouble. This is lost position for black. So, those ideas, as I, as I mentioned also, impossible, impossible to go through all this possible... Uh, um, uh, all these continuations what black can play. You have to remember, there are ways when we play for a pawn structure, there are ways when we play for direct attack on a king. Now let's look at the uh, continuation and idea and uh, ideas behind Kasparov's bishop d7 move. Bishop b5, d6, d3, bishop d7, bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6. This happened in Kasparov's game against Ljubojevich, uh, um, uh, Yugoslavian grandmaster, queen e1, queen d7, and here what black wants to do. Black wants to castle queen side. Now, we have to know one thing here. We do not play queen h4 and f5 unless 
we are 100% sure that that's where black is canceling. What we do, we making waiting move bishop d2 and black makes knight f6 suppose also waiting move we play rook to b1 waiting move and here black castles in a lot of games queen side and we're gonna see what happens now if black has castle king side i would go h3 first and then I go queen h4 and f5. I'm not in a hurry to h4 right away because there is not much of a counterplay for black on a queen side. The reason why I play h3 because I, after queen h4 I want to avoid queen g4 and I definitely don't want to exchange queens. So that's why I would play h3 followed by queen h4 and f5 with a standard attack. Now what happens if black castles queen side? Then b4. You see that the rook b1 move paid off. b4, c takes b, takes b4. Well, I don't know how can you can I put mildly here, but black is lost. Even if you put it very mildly, black is still lost. What we want to do, queen f2, you see the diagonal, we want to jump with the queen on a7, and then rook b1, and then bishop e3, and knight d4 coming too. Every one of white's pieces will be all over the black's king. There is no possible defense for black in this position. After b4, black is absolutely and unconditionally, unconditionally lost. So now we will go back and look what happens. We will look what happens if black does not allow Grand Prix. Remember, that's easy to do for black, not to allow this variation. For instance, they can go knight c6 and after f4, d6 and after knight f3, e6. But now we, or a6, now we cannot go bishop b5, then what do we do? Now this is not Grand Prix anymore. So that's what you have to do here. You have a choice of a couple of continuations. Actually, it could have been done like this. You can go to d4 and switch to regular Sicilian if you are comfortable with the position after f4 and a6 and because now black cannot play Paulson system they cannot play Nydorf variation this is one way to play secondly and one I play is g3 knight f6 d3 and now simply going after g6 we go bishop g2 bishop g7 we castle, black castles. Now this is very common closed Sicilian position, regular closed Sicilian, with wasted move a6. Black does play b5, but not with a6, rook b8 and b5 and a5. This is like having closed Sicilian opening with a6 wasted move for black and th then what you play here just like uh, everybody plays uh, the close Sicilian h3 g4 then knight e2 knight g3 and push your pawns and attack on the king side that black's priority blacks uh, actually it's a black's choice not to allow grand prix attack the way we played there is another way to, to for black where they can avoid Grand Prix attack. It's e4, c5, knight c3. They can go e6 and after f4, a, uh, after f4, a6. Well, here is my answer to this. First of all, on e4, e4, c5, knight c3, e6, I would seriously consider g3 move. 
and after knight c6, knight e2. Now, why is this? After g3, we're playing g3. We don't want black to let black to go g6. Now, if black goes d5 here, then you can pick up from any opening book the continuations we have here, ed, ed, and bishop g5. This is very well theoretical position, very comfortable for white, or even go d3 in this position. This is something we are not going to go over with now, but through, through this now. But g3 is one continuation. C6, the reason why I'm saying I want to go knight e2, make sure black does not play g6 and bishop g7. The reason why I'm playing knight e2 first because before I put the bishop on g2 is because if they go g6, then I go d4. That's always bad for black. It's bad for black to play g6, e6 if d4 is possible. Now c takes d4, knight takes d4, and now black has also has to play a6 because after bishop g7, <coughs> knight to b5 is very very strong. So this is not good for um, uh, for black. So white will if white goes g on, on e6, I would recommend g3, but also you can go f4. Now on knight c6, knight f3, and suppose now black goes a6. But again, you want to go d4 and play Paulson variation regular, you, have a, a, you, you can do that. Or, or you can go d3, and after knight f6, e, and on d5, go e5, knight d7, bishop g2. Normal position for white when they're going to castle, and slowly prepare king side play. Again, of course, this position alone we can analyze for half an hour more, but uh, we don't have this luxury, so what you can do, you can go ahead and look for the games uh, played with this variation, or I really mean it, you can come help you find the games and answer any questions you might have. So, and again, so now let's look at continuation after e4, c5, knight c3, knight c6, f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5. If black plays queen b6, we can simply take on c6, we were going to take this knight anyway. Now queen takes, we can go d3. Castle first, so d3 is fine. d6, castle, knight f6. You see, does not, the character of the position remains exactly the same. We have the same plan, queen e1, queen h4. There is nothing can happen, you will never never get the position exactly same positions over and over and if there is some little changes like this you see why is this to be considered as different position it's not light square bishop is missing. black's knight is missing white has same pawn structure and if black castles we have to go on and continue with exact same attacking plan queen e1 queen h4 so you have to be able to apply these ideas to uh, in all uh, uh, possible variations. So you play it correctly. Don't forget to contact me if you have any problems with this opening. And playing it correctly will always give you comfortable position with clear plan. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up 
for my free mail course the 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.